Uh, real quick, though, we've got Tim joining us. Tim, Tim was live at the game tonight. Tim, we've been chatting about the game. I think you probably heard a little bit of us. Tell us what it was like at the game. Uh, it, it was all right. Again, just supporting with the crowd. I don't know what people are waiting for to come out and watch this team. Um, uh, the, the, I did hear you talk about um, the light show at the beginning. That was that was really impressive. Uh, I think I texted you guys how they had a QR code up there and on, on the big screen. Um, that, that was pretty cool. The electricity in the stand was there early, but then people started getting this hush because, again, just uh, with the way the defense was playing, but especially um, the the special teams. But I'll talk about that later. Uh, overall, it was great. It was it was a wonderful time. Um, I I really do. I heard someone. Uh, I, I can't remember the name of the caller, but he made some great points about second half adjustments, and that's really what I. That's my key takeaway from this game is is with, we are making those those halftime adjustments, and they pretty much shut them out. I don't know if you guys noticed it, but on that last drive when they did well, the drive, they scored. Uh, it was, it was with backups in there. I mean, you had Covington, like like uh, I think Rick brought up Covington on that PI. I mean, I texted you, Rick, about that was not PI. They only no, gave us one angle, was unless not. there was some like jersey grab from behind. That was a clean. He didn't go through him. He came around him, made a great it, play. It was, it was textbook. He didn't have the hand on the on the back pulling the jersey or anything. It was it was textbook, and the announcer said as much. Yeah. Well, what we we have about another uh, little le- little over a year and a half of this crap. And we'll be out of this, this rinky-dink conference with these refs and we won't have to deal with this anymore. Um, but uh, but also, you there, if you looked at on, and flashing in front of me was big number one, the the freshman uh, cornerback, Damani Jackson, who got a little bit of playing time last week. Uh, he was in on that series. And he, man, I thought he was going to have his first interception of the year, that one that popped off his chest and up and just magically landed it into the lap of uh, that ASU receiver. But that, that that drive, they scored that touchdown on. There was a there was a lot of magic for ASU in that in that drive. They really should not have. They should have come with points on that drive at all. And, and if that's the case, you know they're looking at shutting them out in the second half, which is that adjustment uh, that everyone's been been wanting to see. Well, not shutting them out, but you know holding them down and score. So I'm pleased. I'm very happy. Hey, it's win in advance. We're five and zero. Oh. There's a few teams that went down today that were uh, undefeated at the beginning of the day, and um, yeah, it, it wasn't maybe um, did the, the first half didn't live up to the expectations from the defense standpoint. But the key here is second half adjustments. They didn't let him score with a minute left. You had the pick by Kalen Bullock. I love it because we had a similar example of, um, uh, you know, a, a defense that would not quit against Fresno State, you know, with that fourth and one fourth and goal. And uh, they had a good stand. So I love the fact that this team plays hard all the time. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I didn't. I got um, I had bad battery, bad connection. That's why I call in earlier. But uh, did you guys have a chance to discuss the special teams or the not so special teams today? Uh, well, they were they seem like they're special and they belong in a short bus. But uh, tell us your thoughts. Yeah. So we know that the. That, they don't have now. Uh, granted, I'm glad we've gotten away from giving like having eight scholarship kickers on the team like we used to have with the previous uh, group of guys we had run in place, you know, and and like a, a spending a lot of time, highly publicized, spending a lot of time on special teams that again weren't very special. But um, is it me or do we not get past the 20 yard line even without the penalties when we do return it? I think I, I think I texted you guys during the game saying, "Can we just?" I think I tweeted out too. Can we just just fair, you know uh, do a, a touchback the rest of the game because I'd like to get that ball to the twenty five yard line and, and get going because with the penalties today and with uh, that onside kick which turned out to be okay but wouldn't we have rather seen him dive on the ball I forgot who was there uh, I think it was Hudson Ware that jumped out of the way of that ball you know the, all that could have been covered if he just lands on the ball um, I didn't really have a good angle out they did play a really good the the review was kind of obscured by the, the play itself. So I didn't really see anything, but it just looked like he kind of, you know, got out of the way. And if that thing had gone 10 yards without the illegal block, that game might've gotten interesting. Just a number of things, you know, the kicking game, kicking hasn't been stellar. Punting was okay today, but the, what, what, one punt or two punts were okay today, but punts have been far from, from good. Uh, I, I don't think we need a special teams coach. I know Riley, this is his team. He does what he wants. I, I full faith in him, but maybe we need to spend a little more time on special teams because if we play a team like Utah or should be able to look like UCLA, 
you know, if, if, if Notre Dame wakes up with all the talent they have on that team, if we're playing special teams like that, it's going to cost us a game somewhere down the road. Real quick, because this guy keeps making comments. Gary keeps saying Riley's the villain of college football. I, I don't know if you're an Oklahoma fan, but get over yourself. Like, Oklahoma's got a lot of problems. None of them came from Lincoln Riley. All right, we're all, we're all done with that nonsense. Uh, you know my take on talking about Oklahoma. Yeah, we're not talking about Oklahoma. That's their, that's their business. We, 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 are, we, did have a little, we did have a little chuckle about that earlier. But uh, there, there's really there's really no reason. Oklahoma people have Oklahoma people need to worry about the problems inside their own house. Uh, they can they 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 need to go strategize that in the Oklahoma shows. Yeah, and I want to watch that play. I think I heard Rick. You were cutting out because my internet was terrible. But you're talking about that play that um, on the on the interception that went to Addison. Um, it, it looked like a really strange play. It looked like they again they didn't replay it. I don't know why they, they got to work on that. Uh, it looked like they locked up. Um, but that was downfield. And correct me if I'm wrong, if if the defender has their hands on your receiver and the ball's in the air, isn't that pass interference? They I didn't have a good view of it. They didn't show that on the broadcast. I couldn't tell if he was being held or locked up. What they showed, Caleb looking in that direction the whole way and then throwing. I don't know if he saw the bracket coverage. There was two guys on Addison. And and the uh, the underneath guy was able to pick off the pass. So um, hey, it was unfortunate. It was a mistake. I don't think that pass should have been thrown. But oh well, you move on. I think there was a question in the chat um, about. Uh, let me see here. Ooh. Uh, Real quick, while he looks for that, oh, oh. I just want to give a shout out to John Demilet to pointing out. We are now, we, and a couple of guys just said this in the chat, we've won more games now and are undefeated than we won in the entire season last year. And yeah. I will I will take it. There you go. Oh, I found it. Uh, Robert, I Jen- it. Robert Jenkins asked, Corey Foreman needs to step up big time. There was another question. I, I couldn't see it, but um, they want to know how Corey Foreman did. Um, he was in on a couple plays. He, he's not really standing out. I think he did have a tackle on a run play. But I what I like about this coaching staff, and Alex Grinch was asked during the week, hey, you need to perform in practice. Doesn't And, and it's any player. doesn't matter what the, his first name is, his last name. It's about performing. And if you can't perform in practice, you're not going to play. And so what that means is, hey, you're not performing in practice. For whatever reason Corey Foreman has, Hey, he's had 10 months. He's had he's had spring ball. He's had summer workouts. He's had fall camp. He's had the season. Whatever his, his excuses are, it's not happening. So there's other guys stepping up, like a Solomon Bird. You know, he's a player, a transfer from Wyoming, third on the depth chart. He's stepping up, and he got pressures tonight. He had pressures against Oregon State uh, on two sacks. So – yeah, Corey Foreman's a five-star, the number one recruit. But this is a good example. It doesn't matter about the stars. And I love it about this coaching staff. You know, it's not like the other coaching staff that had the love of his life and he's going to play them. Who cares what mom and dad say, what they do on phone calls or texts? If your son's not working hard enough and can't pick up the, the playbook, he's not going to play. There's other guys that have stepped up and have filled the world admirably. So kudos to them. Yeah, uh, did you guys have a chance to talk about those uh, the two plays on third down where sh- which should have been sacks uh, that Caleb was able to just uh, duck under and spin out of? Oh, I and think there were more third- than two. He was he was Houdini at one point. Well, I'm looking at the th- specifically it was like third and eight and third and four, um, and on one of them he literally had a guy turntable on his back and he's able to spin out of it and and run and pick up the first down. Uh, and on both of those drives, the, there, there were important touchdowns. I, I know that we're having issues. Um, we had we had our backup, you know, um, left tackle in. I mean, I know that Ford split time with Bobby Haskins, but I think it's clear to see that um, this line there's, there's noticeably different without Ford in it. Uh, I don't know if I'm being unfair unfair to Bobby Haskins, but uh, it just seems like a lot of that pressure is coming from the left side, and um, Again, I, I just can't wait for to get him back. I know that they said that he 
possibly could have played up in Eugene. I mean, um, Corvallis, but he didn't play. Uh, they held him out, you know, th- th- but he w- would have been available and they held him out again today. And I'm hoping that this, the injury is not worse than they're saying, letting on and that they're just trying to give him, they're saying, okay, we don't need to play him. And they're giving him more and more time to heal because I really, really think that we need him. Was he back? Did he, did he play reps this game? Yeah, he, he, he got a uh, holding penalty on a key pass. I believe it was to Mario Williams. It was that on Ford? Yeah, it was on Ford. Yeah. And, um, you know, they showed it on the replay. It didn't have to happen. It did. You know, he was trying to protect um, Caleb from getting sacked. And I believe the pass was to Mario Williams wide open. It was probably like a 50, 40, 50 yard pass. How many uh, series was he in? Yeah, I remember that play. How, how many? And I, I know I heard, I remember the holding call. How many, how many um, series did he play? Did he play more than that one? I believe he played a few more series. Yes. Okay. Well, maybe I can, maybe it's not. Well, there's the, like a uh, archer saying, or didn't look right to me. I think he's dealing with an injury. Okay. So I couldn't, we could, from where I am, I couldn't see the actual jerseys in the line. That got kind of hard, but I did keep saying 70. But I know I saw Haskins in there. We also but, um, talked about Justin Dietrich didn't play. Um, seldom used backup. Jonas played pretty much the whole game and he played pretty well. Yeah, but it did see, the pass protection looked good, but it didn't seem like again the the running uh, on the right side, or at least early on, especially, just seemed like it wasn't there. Uh, off to the right, to the left, there was some success, but not to the right, which would, which have been running to Keonan's side. The other thing I liked about this game that's very subtle is Lincoln Riley is getting a lot of other um, receivers involved. There was a call yeah. I was saying to a friend. I said, uh, it was the second half. Oh, Kyle Ford's in. It was in the red zone. I said, look for Ford to get a, uh, a pass. He was on the bottom of the screen, uh, and, and the ball went to him, and he, he just missed a touchdown. I think he got to like the one or two-yard line. But, um, you know, boom, there's a pass play to him. Uh, you got a touchdown to Malcolm X in, in the end zone, tight end. Uh, Kyron Hare, uh, Hare Hudson got a uh, touchdown as well. Taj Washington, again, had a few catches. So you can see Caleb, you know, obviously the ball, balls went to Mario, went to Jordan, but there's other guys getting involved in the offense um, from a receiving standpoint that are going to be um, critical moving down as we move through the schedule. They're going to make some big catches because it's not just going to be Addison and Williams. These other guys are getting confidence. They're getting involved. And Travis Dye – Although the yardage is not going to, you know, show up, another solid performance. Two TDs, some big runs. The guy's solid. Just a just a player. Real quick, because we were talking about this earlier. Uh, Gix was pointing out uh, Nagata and Caleb both had offers to Alabama. He says they're probably old friends and the water bottle. And so I, I, I thought you were right because I, I thought it looked like Caleb Williams was laughing like as he went backwards. Like that looked like the kind of thing you do to your friend. Like not a not a not a nasty thing, I, so that's actually that's great the great insight to know. So yeah, it was pro- probably probably old friends, and I'm sure we'll we'll hear more about that uh, in in the news. Be they'll they'll definitely talk about that. It, I'm it not was, sure if you I'm not sure if he was correct, but um, uh, pregame uh, Arbogast said that uh, the so we all know that that Travis Dye had rushed three straight games to 100 yards. He said that was the first time in his career that's happened. I mean, I, I, Arbogast knows his stuff, but I, I found that very shocking, considering how many yards he's been he put up uh, up in, in in Oregon. So, but he obviously was held below the the hundred. But like you said, Rick, those yards he did get, uh, he got tough yards. Like he runs like a guy who's six foot one, two ten, the way he runs, and he he gets those nasty hard hard um, hard runs for us. So. There, there was a key example of that, I believe, in the fourth quarter. It was, I believe, I've got it right here. It was a, I, it, I don't know if it was a handoff or it was a pass to the flat. And he collected probably 12 yards and he made contact like in the 10th yard and pushed the guy back two or three yards. Yeah, I know you're talking about that. And just gave it to him. I'm like, there you go, man. That's what, that's what a veteran running back does. Is like I'm bringing it to you. See if you can stop me. 
I love we, it. we got a really, we really got a really good, a really good question. First, I want to give a shout out to friend of the show, Mikey G, leaving Austin right now. Nice win for the Ducks. Your guys looked good. 